The history of northeastern Pennsylvania is a story of miners and railroaders, clergymen and criminals, industrialists and socialists, land speculators and authors. Let's explore some of this history through one particular angle, the stories behind our town names. First published in print form in 1988, this is a companion video to The Lingo of Northeast Pennsylvania, also available on YouTube. Let's go mostly in alphabetical order, beginning with the Abingtons. Around the year 1794, a gentleman by the name of Colonel Ebbings, a land agent from Rhode Island, granted deeds to New Englanders headed for what's now the Clark Summit area. With deeds in hand, the settlers could arrive here and say they legally owned the new property. These settlements were initially known as Beechwoods, but as more settlers arrived, they named the area Ebbington in honor of the shrewd colonel and out of gratitude for the chance to own better farmlands. Over the next few years, however, authorities in Philadelphia began to challenge any land claims issued by New Englanders. Predictably, the value of the Yankees' titles plunged, as did the stature of Colonel Ebbings. So in 1806, Ebbington became Abington, the similar-sounding name taken from a small settlement in Connecticut. Archbold Linking regional coal mines to the New York area, the Delaware and Hudson Canal Company played a pivotal role in the development of the Lackawanna Valley and in the naming of its towns. Archibald was named in 1846 for James Archibald, a senior mechanical engineer on the D&H and the first mayor of Carbondale. Prior to this time, Archibald was known as White Oak Run, which still exists today as a stream. At some 18 square miles, Archibald is the seventh largest borough in Pennsylvania, making it about 72% the size of Scranton and twice the size of Wilkesboro in terms of area. Archibald was also the site of an anti-draft demonstration during the Civil War. In 1866, the town's Young Men's Institute displayed the true colors of Northeast PA by staging a play called The Drunkard. Ashley at times known as Colville and Scrabble Town, a nod to the scrabbling needed to survive in this coal town. Over the years, Ashley also went by the names of Pease Town, Nanticoke Junction, and worse, Skunk Town. In the latter 1800s, Ashley took its name in honor of the wealthy Herbert Henry Ashley of nearby Wilkesboro. Pictured here is Ashley's Huber Breaker. Asylum. Located along Route 6 near Wyalusing, Asylum, also referred to on some maps as French Asylum or even Asylum with a Z, was established in 1794 as a haven for French aristocracy at the time of their revolution. Several members of the French advance team had a tough go of the harsher climate of Northeast PA, however, and eventually hightailed it back to the fashionable salons of Paris. The original structures from their visit are gone, although a few artifacts remain, making for a minor tourist attraction. Some of these colonists eventually spread outwards from asylum, leaving behind their influence upon towns that include Laporte and Dushore, as well as Frenchtown, Roulette, and Leroy, meaning the king. Avoca. Once known as Pleasant Valley, Avoca took, or shall we say received its name, in convoluted fashion, from the valley town of the same name on the southeast coast of Ireland. It's also been suggested there was a deliberate irony to the choice. In the 1800s, a popular poem entitled Meeting of the Waters circulated around Ireland. Written by one Thomas Moore, it featured the line, The Sweet Vale of Avoca, and lamented the unspoken reality beneath the facade of happiness in this Irish town. When you consider the role of the disastrous 1888 train wreck, 
the Mud Run disaster that killed 29 Pleasant Valley residents, the tone of the irony becomes clear. However, it was a couple years earlier, sometime between 1885 and 1887, when the post office picked the name Avoca to lessen the confusion of having four Pleasant Valleys in eastern Pennsylvania alone. These days, Avoca also carries the dubious distinction of being home to the only airport in the world named backwards, the ultimate train wreck of a name. Berwick Religious intolerance in the 18th century did not confine itself to Europe, and the Quakers in particular suffered persecution and execution both in England and in the New World. Quaker itself was once a derogatory term, mocking some expressive mannerisms seen during services of the Society of Friends, as Quakers are formerly known. Founded in 1786 as a place of religious refuge, Berwick, Pennsylvania owes its name to Berwick-upon-Tweed, a coastal town on the northeast corner of England. Home to many Quakers, the original Berwick's location on the border of England and Scotland made it the target of frequent territorial disputes. Add this factor to the religious intolerance, and you find conditions ripe for a new Berwick, this time on the Susquehanna River in Pennsylvania. Blakely, named to honor Captain Johnston Blakely, a naval hero in the War of 1812, and a man who probably never stepped foot in the borough, nor on his namesake street in Dunmore for that matter, Blakely, an Irishman and commanding officer of the American sloop Wasp, was lost at sea at 1815. At Blakely Corners today, we see an anchor from the aircraft carrier USS Wasp. One of the earliest settlers in Blakely was a German from Hamburg named Nicholas Luchens, who arrived in 1795 to avoid the draft. In Thomas Murphy's book, The History of Lackawanna County, published in 1928, we learn that Luchens was cultured, fond of display, well now, and a clever linguist, attributes that Mrs. Lukens never disputed, at least in public. Bloomsburg. Originally known as Ayersburg, then Ayer Town, for Ludwig Ayer, who laid out the place in 1802. The town was incorporated in 1870 as Bloomsburg by Samuel Bloom, a county commissioner. Quick question, how many towns are there in Pennsylvania? Just one. Bloomsburg, the only municipality that is classified technically as a town. Everything else is a city, township, borough, or an embarrassment. Even today, the community of Ayers Grove still exists near Bloomsburg. A little south of Bloomsburg, we find Catawissa, taken from the Indian tribe of the same name and said to mean pure water. Brooklyn Township Settlers from the eastern coastal regions often brought their city's names westward. Brooklyn, near Montrose in Susquehanna County, is named not for the New York borough, but for Brooklyn, Connecticut. Fortunately, no one in those days ever traveled from Yonkers or Flushing. As an alternate explanation, local historian E.A. Weston, who wrote his History of Brooklyn in 1889, a raging international bestseller, suggests the name comes from the abundance of brooks, including dry brooks formed by glacial activity, activity whose effects can still be felt today. The town of Carbondale was so impressed by the name Brooklyn that it decided to make Brooklyn Street one of its main drags. Bull's Head this Scranton neighborhood was once known as Church's Corners, after an early settler named Joseph Church. Church Avenue still exists one block west of Maine and forms today part of Bull's Head, as does adjacent Bull's Head Court, but don't say that too quickly. Church, a cattle dealer, owned a large red barn with a picture of a bull's head painted on one side. 
The bull's head was visible at least through the early 1890s. Church also owned a mine as well as the Bull's Head Hotel, located on North Main Avenue. Carbondale, also known as Carbondale. In the early 1800s, Carbondale was little more than a remote site of several unsuccessful mining attempts. By 1820, however, officials of the Delaware and Hudson Canal Company took a new interest in the abandoned shafts, and rumor has it an internal directive told workers to carry tools and supplies to the Dale where carbon was found. Washington Irving, the famous author, and his buddy Philip Hone, the founder of Honesdale, have also been credited with choosing the name Carbondale, hence the old Irving Theater seen here. The Carbondale area was first known as Ragged Island, later as Barrendale, before settling upon the name we know and love today. Carbondale is Pennsylvania's fourth oldest city, preceded only by Philadelphia, Lancaster, and York, and is perhaps the only one of the four to be visited by a UFO in 1974. Chinchilla once known as Leach's Flats, this speck on the map was originally named for one Ephraim Leach, a fur trader who settled here around 1801. Sometime around 1855, however, the female postmaster of Leach's Flats felt the need to upgrade the joint. She chose the name Chinchilla, a nod to her fashionable Chinchilla shawl. To this day, you can still find Leech Street in Chinchilla and Leech Creek in North Scranton. During World War I, Chinchilla endured a brief stint as the Pershing Post Office in honor of the hero general. But by war's end, the popularity of the squirrel-like rodent proved stronger than the good generals, and our furry friend reclaimed his post as the namesake of this pit stop between Scranton and the rest of the Abingtons. Clark Summit. In 1799, Deacon William Clark, or Clarks, cleared a triangular piece of land at the now familiar summit. The cleared parcel was referred to as a green, hence Clark's Summit and Clark's Green. One of the first of the settler soldiers in the Abington area, Clark, originally from Rhode Island, had fought under George Washington at the Battle of Trenton. In payment for his military service, Clark was probably handed the deed to this land scot-free. Records show that Clark and his three sons built their log cabin on the hill where the Clark's Green Cemetery is now located, midway between Clark Avenue and Clark Street, not all that far from Adela Road, which some people suggest was named after two old farmers named Ed and Ella. Cunningham, Southern Luzerne County. Here's an instance where a location was named not just for an individual, but perhaps for an entire family, the Cunninghams, who were mainly from Philadelphia. The most noteworthy of the crew was Navy Captain Gustavus Cunningham, born in Ireland, who helped defend Philly in the War of 1812. Cunningham was a privateer, a mercenary, whose freewheeling ways at sea earned him the reputation of a renegade, though he never quite fulfilled his duties as a cunning linguist, or so says Mrs. Cunningham. Cunningham is part of Sugarloaf Township, and a sugarloaf is simply a pile of refined sugar in the shape of a cone. Sugarloaf Mountain is the cone-shaped hill reaching a height of 500 feet right in the middle of the Sugarloaf Valley. Lying northwest of Hazleton, the Sugarloaf Valley ranks among Pennsylvania's most scenic. Covington. Covington, once part of the vast stretch of beech trees extending eastward from the Scranton Dunmore area, known as Drinker's Beaches. It takes its name from Brigadier General Leonard Covington of Maryland, a distinguished cavalry officer who fought and died in the War of 1812. If you take Dunmore's East Drinker Street, once part of the old Drinker Turnpike, all the way to the end, you'll end up right at the edge of the old Drinker's Beaches. Drinker's Beaches also included Daleville, named for one David Dale who came from England in 1819 
and bought land from Drinker at $5 an acre. Thank goodness he didn't buy it for less. That would be like hitting the Daily Double, in which case Daleville would be known as Dale Dale. Clifton Township. This was formed from Covington Township in 1875 and was named for Clifton Drinker, son of the prominent landowner Henry Drinker, known to his friends as Hank. Both Clifton and Covington Townships are home to Big Bass Lake, a gated community with more than a handful of Russians who like to change into their swimsuits right on the lakefront without the benefit of using the bathhouse. Cresco. Whether intended or not, Cresco in the Poconos is Latin for I am growing. It was a stop on the old rail line from Scranton to New York, and more than one confused passenger thought the train was stopping in Crisco. Once known as Frog Town, a Frog Town Inn still exists in Canadensis, located a few hops away from Crisco. Canadensis is Latin for hemlock. Dallas. Named after a popular lawyer, Alexander James Dallas, Secretary of the Treasury under James Madison and also a magazine editor in Philadelphia. Dallas also once served as the de facto governor of Pennsylvania for a time since the actual governor, Thomas Mifflin, was an alcoholic. Mifflin was the first governor of the state and Mifflin Avenue is the first street in downtown Scranton for whatever that's worth. Dallas's son George later served as vice president under James Polk. The elder Dallas is credited with putting the nation back on a firm financial footing after the near bankruptcy brought upon by the War of 1812, but he never placed a foot inside the historic Robb Hotel of Dallas, seen here. Dalton The Bailey family settled in this part of Abington Township around 1801, and the area took on the name Bailey Hollow. Hollow means small valley. In their book, Clark's Summit, a Narrative, Helen and John Villam recall the story behind the name change. In the 1860s, Dr. J.C. Miles of Bailey Hollow, among other locals, felt the hollow name sounded rather unbecoming for a town of increasing prominence. The railroad would soon choose whether to run through Bailey Hollow or Waverly, and the town fathers felt the hollow name might chase the rail line away. Dr. Miles chose the new name in 1871 after a visit from Dr. Edward Dalton, superintendent of the New York City Board of Health and a Civil War surgeon. Danville once called Dan's Town and or Dan's Village, Danville originally sprung up as a settlement around General Dan Montgomery's store and his father's grist mill for grinding grain in the early 1800s, perhaps near current-day Montgomery Avenue. Pictured here is the tower of the Basilica of Saints Cyril and Methodius, a prominent feature of the Danville landscape. Delano. When one drives south on Interstate 81 through the Schuylkill County area and sees the road sign for this town, we can't help but think of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and whether there's any connection. And yes, there is. The town is named for Warren Delano, a New York investor drawn to the coal region in search of lining his pockets, much as he had once done in China. It turns out that Delano was FDR's grandfather and made a killing by importing opium into Chinese ports, producing thousands of addicts and becoming a thorn in China's side for many years, as played out during the Opium Wars. Delaware, the river and state, take their name from Lord Delaware, sometimes pronounced Lord Delaware governor of the English colony of Virginia. The Delaware Indians, originally the Lenny or Lenny Lenape, were first met along the Delaware River and thus the name. The influence of the Delaware Indian language is still felt today. Its word Hannah 
meaning river, stream, or rivulet, is still seen when you break down the words Lackawanna, Susquehanna, Tobihanna, Tonkanic, and even Pocono from Pocohanna, but it's not the origin of the Wilkesboro word Hena. Dixon City, once known as Priceburg and reportedly the site of some Molly Maguire labor unrest in the 1870s, the town is named for the wealthy and popular Thomas Dixon, a president of the Delaware and Hudson Railroad. A Scotsman, Dixon began his career as a mule driver in Carbondale. Dixon City started out as simply Dixon with no pretense of being a city. However, the Postal Service tacked on the word city in order to differentiate the local Dixon from several other post offices. Many locals still call their town Dixon, not of any throwback to the past, but simply as a type of verbal shorthand. Right up the road we find Peckville. Williamsport was once the unofficial lumber capital of the world, but northeastern Pennsylvania also saw its share of the lumber industry as well. For many years, the Peck Lumber Manufacturing Company contributed heavily to the region's economy. That operation was begun by Samuel Peck of Massachusetts. Drums. Several Pennsylvania towns take their names from taverns, which in their day included sleeping accommodations and thus were the focal point of local activity, legitimate or otherwise. Drums today sits near the site of Abram Drums Tavern, which opened north of Hazleton in 1790, perhaps near the site of the old Angela Park, pictured here. For its first few years, the town was spelled Drums with the apostrophe. Some taverns of the day were called ordinaries, where one could purchase a simple, ordinary meal, usually a mid-afternoon dinner, for a moderate price. Dundaff, located north of Carbondale in Susquehanna County. An early settler here claimed his ancestors once lived in Dunduff Castle in Scotland, where the name is closely related to Dundaff. It's said that the construction of Dunduff Castle was never completed since the original owners ran out of funds. A Dundaff Street still exists in Carbondale, Forest City, Dixon City, Clifford, and Fell Township. Dunmore. This is the story of a bribe run amok. The year was 1838, and Dunmore was then known as Buck Town, named for its abundant herds of deer. A high school team, or the high school teams, are still called the Bucks. A young Scotsman, Charles Augustus Murray, had spent several weeks that year fishing and hunting around old Buck Town. Several local railroad men caught wind of Murray and learned about his father, a wealthy nobleman, the 5th Earl of Dunmore, whose estate was located northeast of Glasgow. The railmen, one of whom was Henry Drinker, persuaded Charles to return home to borrow $1.5 million from dear old dad. The money would finance a new rail link from here to New York. Ever pure in their motives, the railmen discarded the name Bucktown in favor of Dunmore, out of deference, no doubt, to the Earl's undisputed munificence. Unfortunately, it appears the Earl was less than impressed, for his son Charles never returned to America, though he may have downed a pint or two in Dunmore, Ireland. DuPont the wealthy DuPont family of Delaware owned a gunpowder plant here toward the end of the 1800s. This is the same family whose company has grown into today's giant DuPont chemical interests. The Encyclopedia of Pennsylvania once told an amazing little tale of one semi-famous DuPont resident, Faustin Wierkes, who joined the Marines in 1915 so he could quit his job as a breaker boy. Workus was first sent to Haiti and later to the neighboring island of La Gonave. Toward that island's interior lived some 10,000 natives who practiced voodoo and polygamy, though not necessarily in that order. 
years earlier, a deposed tribal ruler named Faustin predicted the future coming of a second Faustin, who would someday rule the land. Young Faustin Wierkes, a Polish-American, soon became king, and the loyal natives now honored this former breaker boy from DuPont. The Marines, however, failed to share the same degree of enthusiasm and quickly yanked young Faustin out of there. A little down the road from DuPont, we find Laughlin, one of many American towns that sprung up around mills, this time a gunpowder mill. The wealthy H.D. Laughlin built seven powder mills here in the 1870s, and for a time he competed with the powerful DuPont family mill up the road in DuPont. Whenever old H.D. told his family he was going to take a powder, they took him at his word. A little to the southeast of DuPont, we find Susskind, a contraction of Susquehanna Connecting Railroad and the home of a reported apparition known as the Susskind Screamer. Durie, home to immigrants from a mixture of European countries, Durie was at times referred to in a disparaging manner as Babylon for its babel of languages. It was named in 1902 for Abram Durie, a mine speculator from New York. Prior to this time, the town was known as Marcy for a Zebulon Marcy who arrived around 1790. Even today, Marcy Street still exists right off of Main Avenue. It's said that Larksville was also referred to as Babylon for similar reasons. Eckley, now a state museum called Eckley Miners Village, the place was once referred to as Shingletown, for that was a prime means of earning a living here exploiting the adequate lumber supply to make shingles for more developed areas. By 1854, the settlement was known as Fillmore in honor of the president who was almost as exciting as Calvin Coolidge. Once the post office objected because Pennsylvania already had a Fillmore, a Philadelphia judge and landowner named Charles Cox took advantage of the situation and named the place for his teenage son, Eckley. Whether young Eckley was dashing and suave is a matter for professional historians to ascertain, but that didn't stop the locals from calling Eckley the ugliest town in America, an expression that alludes to the dealings of the Molly Maguires, whose namesake film was shot right here near Freeland and Hazleton. Einen, named for a Welshman, Thomas Einen, who lived from 1821 to 1911, and which partly explains why the town was once known as Welsh Hill. Einan developed mines in the Mid-Valley, became a prominent Scranton resident, helped found the Welsh Philosophical Society, for whatever that's worth, and is not in Einan anymore. His gravestone can be found in the Washburn Street Cemetery in Scranton, once referred to as the Welsh Cemetery, not all that far from Einan Street, where you can still buy Welsh cookies at Garrity's. Even today, a Port Einan exists as a village near Swansea, Wales. Here we see a lovely jug from Friedman's Liquor House of Einan. Northeast PA, by the way, has no shortage of enviable jugs, whether crafted by bootleggers or by bootlickers. Here we see a well-shaped jug from Scranton, a whiskey jug from Benton, a nice perky jug from Stroudsburg, a pointy jug from Wilkesboro, a whiskey jug from Shemokin, and a nice pair of well-seasoned jugs from Shenandoah with impressive knobs. The Jugtown Microbrewery in Washington Township boasts huge jugs, and southeast of Easton, we can even find a Jugtown Hill Road. Little wonder that the acronym JUG means Justice Under God. Factoryville. In the 1820s, people came from miles around to have their wool woven into cloth at the factory there. Keystone College is technically in Factoryville, but prefers to say it's located in adjacent La Plume for obvious aesthetic reasons. 
one graduate of Keystone College back when it was a high school known as Keystone Academy, was Factoryville resident Christy Mathewson, pitcher for the New York Giants and among the first five members of baseball's Hall of Fame. In Mathewson's honor, Keystone's sports teams are known even Falls. Here's a good example of how various towns took their names from nearby geographic features. Formed in 1824, this Wyoming county town and township, located halfway between Tonkanic and Pittston, takes its name from nearby Buttermilk Falls, near the mouth of Falls Creek, where you can still take Buttermilk Road up to the Mill City Dairy Bar. Finch Hill and Kingsley a young Rufus Kingsley entered the Revolution Army at the ripe young age of 13, becoming a drummer boy. In 1775, he distinguished himself at the Battle of Bunker Hill to such an extent that this Susquehanna County town eventually adopted his name, though they never named their magnificent Kingsley Bridge, pictured here, after him. It was a tradition in Pennsylvania to grant free land to veterans of the Revolutionary War, and both Kingsley and Isaac Finch were beneficiaries of this honor. Finch Hill is a hamlet within Greenfield Township, Lackawanna County, and Finch's gravestones can still be found in a small cemetery along Route 247 there. Like Kingsley, Finch also entered the Army at age 13. Fleetville. An early landowner here, James Van Fleet, once bought a standard wooden plow, but he didn't like the way it worked. So he fashioned his own more effective plow, one with extra hard wood, which is certainly no small consideration when plowing the field on a regular basis. Soon the new Van Fleet style plow started catching on like gangbusters with local farmers and their wives, for that matter, for reasons not fully documented. Fleetville is now home to the Astronomical Observatory of Keystone College for those who want to see the stars in a slightly different way. Forest City In 1885, Forest City was little more than a lumber camp called Pentecost, named for its founder, William Pentecost. The lumbermen often went into Carbondale for supplies by day and possibly diversions by night. Apparently, a group from the lumber camp walked into Carbondale one day and someone remarked, in effect, Where on earth are you from? They looked at each other, stumped, it seems, by the difficulty of the question, before one of the bright ones, a gentleman named John Blake, spoke up, saying, Well, we're from Forest City. The name stuck, and in 1888, Pentecost officially took on this new name. Forty Fort, named for 40 of the earliest settlers from Westmoreland County, Connecticut, who arrived in this area and built a fort around 1769. The area eventually became a flashpoint for various forces trying to control the region, including a joint British Iroquois contingent determined to eradicate the locals. The tensions culminated in the Wyoming Massacre of 1778. For the sake of perspective, however, let's remember that stockades and forts of the time were less about protecting settlers and more about protecting commerce. Forty Fort Borough Hall, built between 1806 and 1808, is perhaps the oldest building in northeast Pennsylvania, slightly older than Scranton's Trip House. One of the officers who fell in the Wyoming Massacre was Colonel George Dorrance, for whom Dorrance Township is named, and who would have preferred a scalping at the poker table. Frackville Named in 1876 for its founder, businessman Daniel Frack, seen here without his makeup on, and no known relation to Frick. The town was previously separated into Frackville and Mountain City before a merger, and the nickname Mountain City is still heard here and there. Frack, a hotel owner, 
was born in 1803 and checked out for good in 1890. Speaking of Frick, the wealthy Henry Clay Frick was safely tucked away in the Pittsburgh area. An associate of Andrew Carnegie and an infamous union buster, Frick garnered enough wealth to found the exemplary Frick Art Collection and Museum in Manhattan, far, far away from Frickin' Frack. Because of its large concentration of immigrant coal workers from the Baltic region, Frackville has also earned the name Little Lithuania. Freeland. This name was chosen to help spread the news that land here was open to cultivation as opposed to nearby coal company land that was either off limits or less hospitable to farming. Just notice the spelling of Freeland here on the milk truck accentuating the free. In its early years it was known as Freehold, same connotation as Freeland, that is until the post office objected, saying that too much confusion would exist between having a freehold in both Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Free Love Valley a now defunct community in the vein of Greeley, Pennsylvania, which we'll get to soon. Located in the greater Pottstown area in the early 1840s, this group of religious idealists preferred holding their worship services in the nude and skinny dipping in the nearby lake. Despite their pacifist intentions, they went by the name Battle Axes of the Lord. Founded by a New England prophet named Theophilus Gates, the group believed that no woman should lack a husband brisk in the sack, and no husband should ever go without the services of an attentive wife. What belonged to one member of the community belonged to all, that is, until local authorities rounded up the bunch one day and charged them with adultery, and perhaps with an over-enthusiastic fascination with trapping and sharing beaver pelts. While it's true that Ben Franklin believed walking around one's bedroom in the nude helped induce sleep, he probably never envisioned extending the practice to the aisles of a church or to the shores of Big Bass Lake. Gibson Named around 1812 for Judge John Bannister Gibson, seen here sporting his cheery look, a Chief Justice on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. For a short time, this town midway between Scranton and Binghamton was referred to as Five Partners for the original five families who settled there in 1809. Similarly, nearby Harford was once known as Nine Partners, named after nine families who arrived from Massachusetts around 1790. Judge Gibson, an advanced student of Shakespeare, developed a sterling reputation for his ability to deliver well-crafted decisions that involved a wise interpretation of the law, stepping beyond an over-reliance upon mere legal precedent. Pictured here to the left of Smiley is the South Gibson United Methodist Church. Glenburn. In 1848, George Humphrey bought land near what is now Glenburn Pond, and for almost 30 years the area was called Humphreysville, a name that still shows up on some maps. During this era, the poems and novels of Sir Walter Scott enjoyed widespread appeal, especially among the well-to-do. Scott sometimes used the word Glen to depict locales in his works, and he's credited with popularizing the use of the word in America. Glen literally means narrow valley, but also evokes images of a pristine community. Burn is a Scottish form of brook, and the combined word Glen Burn achieves a heightened literary effect, yet still describes this area north of Clark Summit without hyperbole nor exaggeration for that matter. Glen Lyon. This village in Luzerne County takes its name from a small town in Scotland, a distinction also held by Montrose. Located at the foot of Lees Mountain to the north, locals first called the place Williamstown and Morgantown. The prominent Lyon family eventually took top honors in 1885, as this was the original name of the valley itself, 
not far from Nanticoke. Pictured here is Glen Lyons St. Nicholas Byzantine Church. Goldsboro, named by or for J. Gold, a gold speculator and railroad tycoon who built a tannery here in 1856. Gold was known to enter business partnerships, siphon off company money for personal real estate ventures, run the business into the ground, and then use company security guards to keep his partners outside the gates. In one noteworthy dispute with a partner, their joint venture tannery mysteriously burnt down one night. In the years following the Civil War, a time when the American currency was weak, Gould, one of the richest men in the world, earning his first million by age 21, attempted to corner the gold market. This little ploy led to the infamous Black Friday of 1869. The price of gold plunged and the nation was thrown into a financial panic. Gravity Located in Lake Township, Wayne County, between Lake Ariel and South Canaan, since it was the gravity railroad system that put Wayne County on the economic map, it goes without saying that this is the origin of the hamlet in question. While the main purpose of the gravity lines was to transport coal to larger markets, a fine example of a gravity passenger car is housed at Nayog Park in Scranton. On the way to Honesdale, also known as Honestale, passengers could stop at Fortinia, located at Plateau or level number 14 along the line. Before hitting Fortinia, they could stop at Steen. Perhaps the train whipped through that village so quickly there wasn't enough time to pronounce the full word 16 while scurrying toward a rendezvous at Honesdale's historic Hotel Wayne. Great Bend Located in Susquehanna County, just south of the New York line, Great Bend was once known as Lodersville. The Susquehanna River heads towards Great Bend from Binghamton, then takes a Great Bend and heads for a short distance back up into New York State. This point also marked the final stop along the Philadelphia and Great Bend Turnpike, built over seven years in the 1820s and sometimes called the Drinker Turnpike. If you look closely at a map today, you'll see parts of State Route 407, which includes North Abington Road, marked the Philadelphia Great Bend Turnpike. Greeley The great American newspaper man Horace Greeley once said, Go West, young man, but Horace himself also harbored a fascination with regions much closer, right here in Pike, County east of Lake Wallenpawpack. 19th century America saw several so called utopian societies spring up in the Northeast, most famously the Oneida community in upstate New York. Greeley, the wealthy publisher of the New York Tribune, was also influenced by French socialist writers as well. Greeley eventually became treasurer of Pike County's Sylvania Colony or Sylvania Association, a group of some 136 residents. Most of these were soft Manhattan types in search of a communal type of lifestyle punctuated with a framework known as complex marriage, where each member enjoyed community access to the others. As you could predict from candy-ass New Yorkers of privilege, many balked at the idea of fair and equal distribution of labor. The group disbanded in 1845 after a vicious July frost. They also produced at least eight children who had to be placed into New York orphanages. After the Sylvanians departed, locals referred to the area for quite some time as that Greeley place, which was later shortened to Greeley, where we can still find Sylvania Lake. Pictured here as a remnant of their efforts, the wheel room of their mill. Halstead. Located in Susquehanna County and named for William Halstead, a president of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. If you drive along Route 11 near Halstead and Great Bend, you just may notice a curious state historic marker entitled Joseph Smith. 
The text goes on. Founder of Mormonism, once lived a few miles east of here. Much of the translation of the golden plates for the Book of Mormon is said to have been done there, site now owned by the Church of Latter-day Saints. Hamlin, named for a doctor, Orlo Hamlin, who moved to this part of Monroe County because he wasn't pulling in enough business in the township of Providence, now part of Scranton. It's been suggested that the hardy residents of Providence were a bit too healthy for the good doctor's services. The Hamlin area was also once known as Little Meadows, though some say the current honors go not to the doctor but to Oliver Hamlin an early store owner, or even to Butler Hamlin, an early settler. If Orlo's claim holds up, Hamlin would join the list of other doctor towns in the region such as Montrose, Troop, and Dalton. Hanover Township Originally settled by refugees, many of them German, from the town of Hanover five miles north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. Since that borderline for many years was ill-defined, it rendered the area a magnet for scoundrels trying to escape jurisdiction from one state or another. In fact, locals called the place Rogue's Shore or Rogue's Resort, and enough of them got fed up and eventually relocated to Northeast PA. The original home of these settlers was Hanover, Germany, spelled with two N's. Hanover Township is now home to the student loan processing firm known as Navient, an operation under investigation by several attorneys general from across the nation. This rogue mentality of selective integrity is fostered and actually condoned by the culture of deception generated by the backwards named airport to the north up in Avoca. Hanover Township was also once the home of Sansui Park, which closed in 1970. That park was located on the Sansui Park Way that takes you from Nanny Cook up into Wilkesboro. Sansui is French for without a care or carefree, which is certainly how one may feel after two hours at the Sansui Club in Paris, stumbling out the door like a tumble bug. Harford originally known as Nine Partners for the first nine families who settled in this Susquehanna County locale in 1790. The settlers had arrived from Attleboro, Massachusetts, possibly passing through Hartford, Connecticut along the way. Apparently they were impressed by what they saw there, for by 1807 their new digs were known as Hartford, PA, spoken with a soft T. A close-knit group these Puritans gathered shortly thereafter to discuss the ramifications of the town name. In one of history's more profound quotes, right up there with Don't Give Up the Ship, Hartford resident Laban Capron reportedly stood up, ran his thumbs up and down his designer suspenders, and urged his neighbors, in a passionate tone one would suspect, to strike out the tea. Any further bursts of eloquence from old Laban have been lost to the ages, though it's said today's post office here was once Laban's man cave. Even today, Harford sports a nine partners road, as well as the intriguing Devil's Elbow Road. Harvey's Lake the name was discovered by accident, it is presumed, during the Revolutionary Era by Benjamin Harvey, a local soldier returning home from British Indian imprisonment in Canada. If one pieces the story together, it's an educated guess that Harvey walked back from Canada, eventually stumbled upon a creek that now bears his name, one that fed the lake that now bears his name, spotted the lake in a fog, and then with a stroke of good fortune finally found his family's homestead near what is now West Nanticoke. Perhaps the legend itself, whether true or not, was colorful enough to get the name, rather the lake named after Ben, until a better explanation emerges. 
once a great day trip destination for the general public, Harvey's like today is increasingly surrounded by doctor and lawyer types intent upon turning the lake into their own private pond. Hawley. Sitting at the northern tip of Lake Wallenpawpack, Hawley has seen several name changes over the years. The settlement that grew into present-day Hawley was formed at an eddy, a little whirlpool, near where the Lackawaxen and Wallenpawpack rivers converge. By 1792, the area became known as the Eddy. By 1829, Pawpack Eddy, not to be confused with Fast Eddy, and by 1848, Falls Port. A year later came the name Hawleysburg, named for one Irad Hawley, a president of the Pennsylvania Coal Company, which figured prominently in the development of the Honesdale Hawley area. By 1851, the Berg was dropped, giving us the name we have today. Pictured here is the massive Hawley Silk Mill, built in 1881 and featuring a water wheel that's six stories high. Hena Gulch, another name for Wilkesboro. This town is located within a valley, a synonym for which is Gulch. On a per capita basis, more Hena's are spoken in Wilkesboro than anywhere else on earth, earning it the nickname Trailer Haven. Ergo, the proper name for Wilkesboro is Hena Gulch, part of the Nanny Coke Wilkesboro area, if you follow the corrupted logic of the backwards airport name up in Avoca. However, a movement is now underway, even as we speak, to rename Wilkesboro as either Newark minus the glitter or Kickback Haven. Wilkesboro is center of the valley home of a juvenile mindset that views the rest of the world as a subset of itself. Hazelton. This is the case of a famous misspelling. Hazelton was referred to as Hazeltown in the first half of the 1800s, a nod to the abundance of hazel bushes that dot the landscape. Moravian missionaries had earlier called the area St. Anthony's Wilderness, an upgrade from the old Indian expression Hazel Swamp. The name later became one word, Hazel Town, and then simply Hazelton. But in 1856, a bright attorney in Harrisburg, drawing up the city's incorporation papers, spelled H-A-Z-E-L, as H-A-Z-L-E, and no one picked up the error until it was too late. The 1850s saw the first rumblings of the movement for Hazelton's secession from the political cesspool known as Luzerne County. According to proponents, Hazelton would become the center of a new county known as Anthracite. It would encompass southern Luzerne County and parts of eastern Schuylkill. By 1895, the measure breezed through the state legislature, creating a new county called Quay. However, the legislation was vetoed inexplicably by Governor Daniel Hastings, who was almost certainly on the take from the usual suspects. The Hazelton Press was outraged by this double crossing, as described in the book, Betrayal and Deliverance of a Community, by prominent attorney Pasco Schivo. The author Harold Orend of Mount Carmel, in his book, Population Change and Social Continuity, published in 1986, noted that during the secession era, a cultural fault line existed between Hazleton and Wilkesboro. Orend was an associate professor of history at Penn State Hazleton. This fault line still exists even today, and it's even more pronounced between the Appalachian town of Wilkesboro and the east coast city of Scranton. Honesdale. To transport coal to the eastern markets, gravity railroads carried the loads out of the Lackawanna Valley and over the Music Mountains into Honesdale, a gargantuan task at the time. Gravity technology is still seen today in the operation of many roller coasters. 
at Honesdale, coal was transferred onto the barges of the Delaware and Hudson Canal to be floated onward toward the Delaware River and eventually the Hudson. The barges, sometimes called the coal boats to the tidewater, were pulled by mules, carried tons of coal at a time, and clipped along at a turtle's pace of three miles an hour. The canal construction had been pioneered by Philip Hone, a wealthy New York mayor and first president of the D&H. Honesdale was first known as Dyberry Forks, where we can still dine today. Son of a German immigrant carpenter, Hone wasn't shy about expressing his contempt for most immigrants from Ireland. Honeypot, a section of Nanny Coke. Named by a Major Alden, for whom the community of Alden is named, in 1772, as he reportedly discovered hordes of wild bees there and noted how easily one could obtain honey. Honey Hole. Little more than a village in the Hazelton area, the name is fisherman slang for a sweet spot where the fish are biting rather nicely. Thank you. Back in the day, the Postal Service seemed to locate a post office just about anywhere, including Ma and Pa general stores in places like the old Honey Hole. Fortunately, we can still find a Honey Hole road that can take us from drums to mountaintop. Another discovery town is Sugar Notch, as is Black Walnut. Early Yankee settlers coined the name Sugar Notch after they found an abundance of sugar maple trees in this mountain notch or gap located off the Interstate 81 exit for Nanny Coke. Hop Bottom. This area was known for its hop vines grown for regional breweries and the Susquehanna County town was once known as Foster as in the Foster Station pictured here. It was sometimes described by locals as Hopping Bottom, a teasing jab at Methodist settlers whose religious ceremonies could get rather expressive in the same vein as the Shakers, who also knew how to shake their booty in praise of the Lord. Hornbrook, a double honor of sorts bestowed upon a former locality in Bradford County though now just a park and road near Tawanda. Credit for this descriptive name goes to the intrepid Isaac Horton, who didn't hear a who, but who supposedly found a nine-foot-long tusk of a mastodon in the future Hornbrook Creek in 1844. Intelligent minds do wonder whether Horton ever saw intrepid beavers swimming in Hornbrook checking out the tusk, but no firm citations can be found on this pressing matter. A little further up the Susquehanna, near Sayre, we once found the old Indian village of Willowana, which has been translated as either Bighorn or the place where the big horn was found. Beavers beware. Hyde Park. Once a borough independent of Scranton, the Hyde Park section picked up its name sometime in the 1820s when it was founded by Joseph Fellows and a small park and street still exists in his memory today. One early homeowner there, Harvey Chase, had recently moved from Hyde Park, New York, home of the future Roosevelt Estate. One day Chase took a piece of wood, painted the name Hyde Park on it, and placed the sign in his neighbor's front yard. Needless to say, the name stuck, whether Chase's purpose was good-natured needling or not. Hyde Park, New York had been named for Edward Hyde, a governor of the New York colony. The name's choice, no doubt, was influenced by the famous Hyde Park of London. Inkerman, located a stone's throw south of Sebastopol in the Pittston area, much as the Inkerman in present-day Crimea is located three miles east of Sevastopol, a major port on the Black Sea. Both of these Russian cities figured prominently in the Crimean War, which was fought for control of and access to the Middle East. In November 1854, the Battle of Inkerman resulted in a hard-fought joint French-British victory over Russian forces. 
The word Inkerman is said to mean cave fortress in Turkish, and pictured here is the 8th century cave monastery of Inkerman, Crimea. Which brings us back to Sebastopol. Sebastopol began as a port village along the Susquehanna south of Pittston. Once called Thompson, Thompson Street still exists today. The name eventually was changed to commemorate the courage of the legendary port city from Russia, pronounced Sevastopol, on the Crimean Peninsula. Located on the northern shores of the Black Sea, Sevastopol resisted a year-long siege during the Crimean War. Leveled in the battle, Sevastopol soon rebuilt itself and worked its way into the imagination of an America suffering through the throes of the Civil War. Over here, we simply forgot that the Russian letter B is spoken like a V, thus the mispronunciation. Let's drift away from Northeast PA for a moment and visit Intercourse, figuratively speaking. Originally named Cross Keys, in reference to an old tavern, this town with the precious name was founded in 1754 and possibly called Intercourse by the locals. Some suggest the name stems from the entrance to an old racetrack just east of town, the point where one could enter the course. Another suggestion is that two major roads once crossed here, the old King's Highway from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh, intersecting with the road from Wilmington to Erie. This explanation in itself is strong enough to explain cross keys. A third suggestion is that the word intercourse, when adopted around 1814, carried only the most platonic connotations of fellowship. Many town names contain a bit of self-promotion, and the founders of intercourse appeared to be positioning themselves as the center of action, so to speak. Certainly a pesky bunch, regardless of the name's Amish heritage, the founders of intercourse, though not Adam and Eve, might feel right at home in other charming Pennsylvania locales, such as Pleasant Valley, Mount Pleasant, Pussyville, now defunct, Honey Hole, Virginville, Big Beaver, Mount Joy, Blue Ball, and Bird in Hand. Japan. At first glance, this name makes no sense given the heritage of Northeast Pennsylvania, but somehow, some way, the old Hazelton Coal Company once managed to export coal to the far east part of Edo. As any crossword buff knows, Edo is the ancient name for Tokyo, and it's also been anglicized as Jedo, a village that still exists today east of Hazelton, right around the bend from the hamlet of Japan, where we can still find Jedo Stars Lane. Located northeast of Hazelton, either Jedo itself or the old Jedo Coal Company was named for Jed. Ireland, or so goes one tall tale. Descendants of Jed, it is believed, are still on the lookout for Jethro, Granny, and Ellie Mae, who is now turning Japanese beyond the pearly gates. German. Once known as Gibsonburg, and even earlier known as Baconville, and both Gibson and Bacon streets still exist today. German takes its name from John German, a wealthy Englishman with mining interests in the region. Unofficially, and certainly to its credit, German is known as the birthplace of first aid in America. This honor is due to the work of a Dr. Matthew Shields, who, beginning around 1910 and under the auspices of the American Red Cross, established various health programs for miners. John German, meanwhile, went on to build downtown Scranton's Hotel German in 1895. Off the beaten path to German, we find the Nebraska section, home of St. Michael's Orthodox Church, seen here. In a similar vein, the town of Pittston has a section called Oregon, named in dedication of the statehood of that former territory. Jersey Shore 
From the late 1790s until 1826, Jersey Shore was officially called Waynesburg, located on the north side of the Susquehanna, west of Williamsport. During this time, many settlers arrived from eastern New Jersey, and over the years, more and more Jersey folk descended upon Waynesburg. The locals on the opposite side of the river, tongue-in-cheek, started to call Waynesburg the Jersey Shore, minus any boardwalk, and the new name started appearing on maps around 1826. Jessup Settled around 1849, Jessup has seen several name changes, first called Seymour, later Mount Vernon, and then Winton, after one William Winton, who established a coal breaker there in the mid-1870s. Winton was a Scranton banker and investor, though the current name was taken from the prominent Jessup family of Montrose. A delegate to the 1860 Republican National Convention, William Jessup, a staunch abolitionist, gave a nominating speech for Abraham Lincoln. A Winton Street still exists today, both here and in Dunmore, as does a Mount Vernon Road on the Jessup-Archibald line, right near the old village of Winton. Jim Thorpe As many of us know, Jim Thorpe was once known as Mount Chunk, meaning Bear Mountain. However, what's less known is that periodic movements have urged a return to that original name. The name Jim Thorpe, one of the most captivating athletes of the 20th century, was chosen as a publicity stunt to help generate tourism. Jim Thorpe is also the site where the Irish-born Alexander Campbell of the Molly Maguires was hanged for murder in 1867. Although he admitted some foreknowledge of the crime, Campbell professed his innocence for the actual murder right up to the gallows. En route there, he rubbed his hand in the mud, slapped it on the wall of the Carbon County Jail, and announced that the stain would serve as an eternal reminder of the injustice being meted out that day. Despite many efforts to sanitize the wall, it's claimed that one can still make out Campbell's handprint today. Justice in Scott Township Records pertaining to the origin of justice are not easy to come by. However, it seems that at one time a young Justice Ackerley was chosen by lottery for the honor of having the village named after him. The old canard about just us remains yet to be proven, but Ackerley Road still runs right through Justice and State Highway 347 also shows up on maps as Justice Boulevard, not all that far from Dalton's Ackerley Creek Bridge, seen here. Kaiser Valley One of the first white settlers in this region was Timothy Kyes, spelled K-E-Y-E-S, who in the, 19, rather the 1770s opened a sawmill along the creek that bore his name, Kyes Creek. Various spellings over the years led from Kai's to Kaiser's and eventually to Kyer's, but never Keister. For his gallant efforts, Kai's was killed by Indians, perhaps while he was distracted and dismayed over all the various spellings. Keystone State A keystone is the top interlocking stone of an arch, the key stone, but never keister, that holds the rest of the arch in place. If you picture the original 13 colonies as a 13 stone arch, Pennsylvania would sit in the middle, with six colonies located to the northeast and six to the southeast. Pennsylvania served as America's keister in a commercial sense as well, since it was an economic force both in the manufacturing trades associated with the North as well as the agricultural trades of the South. And despite exhaustive searches of the keister archives, no connection has yet been established between the keister state and the gloriously named town of Keister, Minnesota. Kingston as with Kingston, Rhode Island, 
Kingston, Pennsylvania was once known as Kingstown. Legend says the name was chosen almost whimsically during a toast, held beneath a shady tree, and possibly under a state of inebriation, a whiskey toast to the King of England, Charles II. Chuck No. 2 was the king who granted William Penn the land rights to the region that eventually became Pennsylvania. Located just west of Kingston, we find Pringle, named in honor of an industrious farmer named Thomas Pringle, for whom the chips were named, or so it is rumored. Just south of Kingstown, we find Edwardsville, named after Daniel Edwards, a superintendent with the Kingston Coal Company. Until 1884, Edwardsville was known as Edwards Dale. Just south of Edwardsdale, we find Larksville. Up until 1840 or so, people called this area Blind Town, perhaps because residents did not obey the admonition about doing it by yourself too many times. The story goes that the name Blind Town slowly changed after the death of old Peggy Lark, who owned a plot of land here until she passed away at the ripe young age of 106, but never served tables at her namesake diner. Laceyville, named for an early settler named Isaac Lacey. Originally known as Brain Trim and Skinner's Eddy, this area west of Tonkatic was once camping grounds for Indians of the Tuscarora tribe. Brain Trim Township still exists here, and Laceyville's old Brain Trim Messenger, a weekly, was one of the first newspapers in Northeast Pennsylvania. And even today, you can still attend services at the Brain Trim Baptist Church, located right near Little Tuscarora Creek. If you're so inclined, you can also stop in at the Skinner's Eddy United Methodist Church, located in a spot the locals still call Skinner's Eddy, though Skinner's first name was Ebenezer, not Eddy. The Brain Trim name arrived here from Brain Tree, England, via Brain Tree, Massachusetts, and it basically means town by the river. When the Laceyville Toll Bridge was completed across the Susquehanna in 1899, the fare was five cents for pedestrians and 25 cents for horses. A little southeast on Route 6, we find the village of Black Walnut, once a settlement called Black Walnut Bottom, a nod to the walnut often found covering the floor of the nearby Black Walnut Creek, which flows under Black Walnut River Road, in an area that some locals call Iroquois Flats. Another such bottom town is Hop Bottom, not to mention the now defunct Thorn Bottom, an earlier name for Nicholson. Lackawanna means the stream that forks, and the fork in question is the confluence of the Lackawanna River with the northern branch of the Susquehanna. Lackawanna County was once part of Luzerne County, and the break-off did not come easy. The first rumblings of secession were heard in the 1830s, some 20 years after Bradford and Susquehanna counties had broken off, due mainly to the impracticalities not to mention the social regression of traveling to backwoods Wilkesboro to transact official business. When rumors emerged that another chunk of Luzerne County wanted to break off, corrupt bureaucrats of Wilkesboro developed a two-point scheme. One, they agreed to the break off in formation of Wyoming County, centered around Tunkhannock, seen as offering little of financial value. Two, and this is the slimy part, Luzerne County decided to stack the deck, just as it did with Hazleton. Luzerne County officials pushed through a state constitutional amendment of spurious legality and probably a few unmarked envelopes filled with cash, stipulating that if any county were to split up, it would require a majority vote of both the new section as well as the old prospects for the formation of a new county called Lackawanna now seemed doomed. But a unique development occurred in 1874 as Pennsylvania established a new constitution. This self-serving amendment was omitted. 
Lackawanna County was now free to call its own shots and in 1874 did just that. Break away from the old school cesspool of redneck corruption that shamelessly tried to handcuff it just like it did with Hazleton. Lake Ariel Early maps describe the lake as Jones Pond and or Jones Lake with the surrounding vicinity named Jonestown. In 1851, the local post office took on the simple name of Ariel, though it took years for the locals to catch on. Two explanations have emerged regarding the source of that name. First, Ariel is the lead character, a playful spirit, a sprite, in Shakespeare's The Tempest, though she never spent a night in her namesake Lake Ariel Hotel pictured here. Second, that the schooner USS Ariel played a significant role in pushing back the British at the Battle of Lake Erie during the War of 1812. Either way, it was the USS Ariel that itself was named for Ariel from the Tempest. Note that we can still find an Ariel Street on Scranton's East Mountain and that the name Blakely also stems from the War of 1812. Inquiring minds of the future will someday figure out the origin of the village known as Pink, located a couple two three miles east of Lake Ariel along Route 191, not far from Beaver Pond Road. Lake Winola, a tragic legend. Winola, whose name means water lily, was a daughter of an Indian chief. Her involvement with a white captive brought dishonor, and once, while looking at her reflection in a lake, Winola saw an image of her father in war paint. Fresh scalps hung from the chieftain's waist, and Winola recognized the scalp of her suitor, whiter than the water lilies. Winola flung herself at the reflection just like Narcissus, never to surface again. Our local Lake Winola in Wyoming County was once known as Crooked Lake, making it a fine summer residence for politicians, whether or not the water lilies graced their namesake stomping grounds. La Plume Some town names in the greater Abington area indicate a people with a taste for finer literature. Glen Burn is a name suggested by the novels of Sir Walter Scott, and Waverley is itself the title of a Scott work. The name La Plume was assumed in 1885 by Mrs. Mrs. Isaac Tillinghast, who used La Plume as the pen name for her various writings when she wasn't helping out with her husband's mail-order seed business. A more precise term for pen name is the French phrase nom de plume, giving evidence of Mrs. Tillinghast's verbal playfulness. Despite being the playful type, and given the illustrious history of Beaver County, it has yet to be established whether Mrs. Tillinghast ever considered using the pen name Le Castor, which is French and Latin for beaver, or whether Mr. and Mrs. Tillinghast preferred to play not with the words, but with the pelt. Little England, a neighborhood of Scranton virtually eliminated during the flooding from Hurricane Diane in 1955. Despite the name, the neighborhood grew very Italian and was located between the Petersburg and Bunker Hill sections. Little England, as it exists today, includes several street names of biblical origin, including Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, James, Paul, and Joseph earning it the nickname Apostle Hill. Another neighborhood that the floodwaters erased was Scranton's Southside Flats area, a heavily Jewish section once called Dodge Town. Those of us who are not entirely naive must hold out the possibility that Hurricane Diane, a watershed event in Scranton's history, was not simply an act of nature given its inexplicable tracking and intensity. Considering the track record and access to military technologies in the hands of the devious Dan Flood, the disgraced Wilkesboro congressman with a history of jerking around Pentagon brass, well, you figure out the rest. 
one federal attempt at weather modification, formerly classified, went by the name of Project Cirrus in 1947. In that year, the military figured out how to use silver iodide to help seed a hurricane that eventually hit the Georgia coast near Savannah. Luzerne County. Luzerne, in effect, means lighthouse. The name honors the Chevalier de la Luzerne, a French nobleman who raised critical funds for the colonial forces at a low point during the Revolutionary War. He later served as his country's minister to the United States. The family name is traced to Luzerne, a village in central Switzerland on Lake Lucerne. The village and lake take their names from the prominent nearby Lucerna, French for lighthouse or watchtower. Lycoming County, the name comes from the phrase sandy or gravelly creek, which apparently is an apt description of Lycoming Creek. The original Lycoming County was quite huge, in fact as large as Connecticut and New Jersey combined. It was later spun off into regions that now form parts of 17 other counties. The current Lycoming County is still the largest in the state, larger than Rhode Island, and nearly three times the size of Lackawanna County. The county seat is Williamsport, home of Lycoming College, known to some students as Camp Lyco. Mahanoy City Native tribes noted how deer congregated at the salt deposits near what is now Mahanoy City. In English, we refer to these deposits as licks. The Delaware Indian name for lick is Mahoney, hence the transition over time from Mahoney City into the present-day form of this Schuylkill County town, Lick City, as it were. The locals have no pretensions of actually being a city. This appendage was tagged on to differentiate the place from Mahanoy Township, not to be confused with Big Bone Lick State Park in Kentucky or Lick Dale near Lebanon. Matamoras. Like Hazleton, here's another case of a careless misspelling. Matamoras took its name during the Mexican War of the 1840s after the American Army captured the city of Matamoros near the border with Brownsville, Texas. Matamoros had originally been named for Mariano Matamoros, a hero of the Mexican War of Independence from Spain. A Catholic priest, Matamoros was eventually captured by the Spanish before he was defrocked convicted of treason, and then executed by firing squad. Technically speaking, if one could walk to the southernmost point of Madame Morris along Interstate 84, midway over the Delaware River, one could stand in the states of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York simultaneously and perhaps experience the ultimate identity crisis. Mayfield. Originally known as Glenwood, the area later became Mayville, named for Captain William May, a manager of some nearby mining operations. As might be expected, a Glenwood Street still exists in Mayfield today. Mayville changed to the less hokey-sounding Mayfield in 1891, joining Glenburn and Elmhurst as town names chosen to help convey pastoral images. Until the 1890s, many of the townsfolk considered themselves residents of nearby Carbondale. Pictured here is St. John's Russian Orthodox Cathedral in Mayfield. Mahopany, Wyoming County. Referred to as Hopany as far back as 1792, the name means place of wild potatoes or place of beads. Take your pick which brings us to the similar-sounding Mashopin, located five miles away in the Tonkanic area. The name again is Indian for glass beads, referring perhaps to an early trading point where glass beads were accepted as a medium of exchange. 
As of 1975, the old white mill of Meshopin, pictured here, has been included on the National Register of Historic Places. Manuka, a section of South Scranton. Manuka might not be derived from an Indian name, and its origin is unclear. Some have linked the word in convoluted fashion to something akin to good land. They claim that Mino means good and Aki means land, but this explanation seems a speck forced and contrived. And apparently there's no truth to the rumor that a clairvoyant Indian once coined the word as an expression meaning land of many Irish bars. For those of us who gravitate toward the good land side of the story, apparently the word Manuka resembles the Potawatomi Indian name for good land, with an additional connotation of contentment as well, though life in the Greenwood colliery pictured here was not all peaches and cream, though things are looking up on present-day colliery avenue nearby. Makanakwa, Southern Luzerne County in 1778, a young Frances Slocum was kidnapped by Delaware Indians from her home near Forty Fort. Raised with the customs and language of the Delaware, Slocum was renamed Makanaqua, meaning Little Bear, far preferable to Little Beaver, and she later married a chief of the Miami tribe. For 59 years, her brothers searched for her, only to find their sister in 1837. By that time, Makonako was so accustomed to the Indian way of life, she found her brother's demeanor disconcerting. Montrose, named around 1812 by a local landowner, Dr. Robert Rose, Montrose combines the doctor's name with the French Mont, meaning mountain. The area had previously been known as Hines Settlement after a Captain Hines who brought his family here from Long Island ten years earlier. In choosing Montrose, Dr. Rose no doubt also had in mind the historic Scottish town of the same name. A highly principled Quaker, Rose also helped establish Montrose as a significant station on the Underground Railroad. Rose was apparently a charming man who obviously read Sir Walter Scott's novel, A Legend of Montrose. When residents of nearby Brooklyn mounted a fierce campaign to locate the Susquehanna County seat in their town, Rose's personality, and perhaps his wallet, carried the day, and Montrose eventually claimed the prize. Rose was also active in upholding the rights of Pennsylvania landowners whose claims conflicted with the deeds of Connecticut settlers. Music, very simply moose land, until a better explanation emerges. More precisely, the name means large herds of moose, and yes, moose could at one time be found in music. Another explanation suggests that music is a derivation or corruption of a Lenape Indian word meaning elk place. The area was also once known as Marathon and later Springbrook. The Spike Island neighborhood of Muzik off Route 502, Springbrook Avenue, supposedly take its name from an island off the coast of County Cork, Ireland. Muzik's greatest claim to fame may be the old Oak Hill Drive-In on Burney Avenue, offering the best in adult cinema for discriminating viewers with cultivated tastes. Moscow Once part of Drinker's Beaches, Moscow is said to be named in the 1830s by Henry Drinker in honor of some immigrants from the great Russian capital. This popular explanation has yet to be confirmed, and a good lawyer could start off by asking, if it were named for Russian immigrants, where are some artifacts, some concrete evidence? Regardless, Pennsylvania does display a fair amount of town names taken from European cities, among them Versailles, Berlin, Manchester, Dublin, Belfast, Newry, Sligo, Hamburg, Athens, Milan, and Rome. However, the best explanation for Moscow comes from Ren Vasiliev, 
a geography professor at the State University of New York at Geneseo. Vasilyev points out there are 18 municipalities in the United States named Moscow, and that most Moscows were named to commemorate Napoleon's retreat from the Russian capital back in 1812. This explanation seems to hold up, given the origins of Inkerman and Sebastopol, and it may help explain the reasoning behind the Petersburg section of Scranton. Mountaintop this name refers not so much to a formal municipality, but to a region. This area, east of Wilkesboro, also known as Haina Gulch, was once a division of Fairview Township, and the post office to remain active in the area was known as the Mountaintop Post Office. An old custom allowed postmasters to call the post office by a different name from the municipality it sat in, as with Chinchilla, leading to obvious confusion. Some locals call the area Mountain Top two words, while others, notably the town newspaper, call it by the one word form of Mountain Top. Whichever way we spin things, Mountain Top is not an ancient Indian word meaning overlooking the gulch. However, nearby Penobscot Knob, meaning where the rocks open out, does overlook the gulch very nicely on a clear day. To the north, the Weimart area can also Mount Carmel. One of several towns and villages whose name was taken from the good book, in this case a holy mount in Israel. Around 1812, a settler opened a pit stop called the Mount Carmel Inn on the well-traveled Center Turnpike in Northumberland County, making Mount Carmel yet another regional town named after an inn, just like drums. Appropriately enough, Mount Carmel has been nicknamed the City of Churches, and Thomas Edison chose to light up the streets with electricity here in 1893. Mount Cobb. Asa Cobb came to this area around 1784 and worked the land near what is now Mount Cobb. The gap in the mountain, for a time called Cobb's Mountain, leading east out of Dunmore, was long known as Cobb's Gap, and Music Lake was for years called Cobb's Mountain Pond, near the current day Eels Nature Preserve. Nanticoke. The town of Nanticoke was an early settlement for the Nanticoke tribe, and modern-day Nanticoke owns its beginnings to the water power generated by nearby Nanticoke Falls. The Nanticoke tribe, originally from the eastern shore region of Maryland, are sometimes known as the Seashore Settlers. The name is a corruption of Nantigo, meaning people of the tidewater. At least one other town in this region, Towanda, owes its name to the Nanticoke. To the southwest of Nanticoke, we find Wanami, a village whose name comes from the Wanami tribe of the Delaware Indians. Nanticoke is now the epicenter of Donanicoke Wilkesboro area if you follow the warped logic of the backwards airport name at Avoca. Nayog Park from Naw Yog, meaning Roaring Brook, which now of course passes right through the park. A section of eastern Dunmore near the intersection of Route 435 and Interstate 380 was once referred to as the Village of Naog. Some suggest the Naog name was delivered our way by settlers from Connecticut. This assertion stands up as the names Naog and Roaring Brook can still be found in the area of Glastonbury near Hartford. A Naog tribe may have existed here in Scranton in the 1600s, but they bailed out long before the establishment of Luna Park, the predecessor to today's Naog Park. New Milford, known as McCarty's Corners in the 1790s, this town, 30 miles north of Scranton, was first inhabited by settlers from the area of Milford, Connecticut, and thus is not a derivative of Milford on the Delaware River. The early lifestyle of New Milford is commemorated by the Old Mill Village Museum located here. Another corner village in Susquehanna County was the elegantly named 
Butts Corners, once located along today's Route 29 near Halstead, safely away from Big Ass Lake. Newton Ransom, located just to the west of Scranton, Newton was named around 1844 by settlers from Newton in northwest New Jersey. Other Jersey towns that share Pennsylvania names include Lewistown, Quakertown, Milford, Allentown, Lebanon, and Hamburg. And don't forget, Pennsylvania has a Jersey Shore, but for better or worse, no Newark. The Ransom half of the equation was named for Captain Samuel Ransom, who raised a company to defend the Wyoming Valley from the British. Poor Ransom was decapitated in the Wyoming Massacre of 1778. Pictured here is the Ransom Poor House, also known as the Poor Farm. Not far away, we find the village of Milwaukee, which roughly means good land, an upgrade from its old name of Flickerville. Nicholson once known as Thorn Bottom, no connection to Butts Corners, the town is named for John Nicholson, Pennsylvania Comptroller from 1782 to 1794. A land speculator, Nicholson claimed ownership to some three and a half million acres covering parts of 39 counties. Due to unsettled accounts and charged with using state funds to fuel his devious land deals, Nicholson was nearly impeached and his land reverted to the state. In 1800, this charlatan died in debtor's prison in Philadelphia. Nicholson is home to the famed Nicholson Bridge, properly known as the Tonkanic Viaduct, found in the northeast corner of Wyoming County. Whether both a dead body and a stash of gold are buried inside are merely old wives' tales that may never die. Noxon, sitting on the southern border of Wyoming County, a few miles up the road from Harvey's Lake, Noxon was once a bustling spot back in its heyday in the 1800s. The Lehigh Valley Railroad extended this far, servicing the lumber and tanning trades. Legend says that way back in the day, a team of oxen was plodding down the main street and a little girl chirped, Look, Mommy, there goes a team of Noxon. These days, Noxon is home to an annual fundraiser called the Rattlesnake Roundup, held every June for the not-so-squeamish, though it's not known for sure whether oxtail soup is on the menu. New Angola possibly means people of the north. New Angola Lake, south of Neticook, is supposedly named after an Indian maiden who drowned there, a story that resembles that of Winola. Both stories echo the legend behind Winona Falls, south of Matamoros. It's said that Princess Winona jumped to her death from a cliff overlooking the falls once she learned that her tribe declared war on the tribe of her lover. The similarity of all three stories suggests these legends are more a singular Indian myth regarding the destructive force of lovesickness, a theme the ancient Greeks took up on occasion, and note how similar the name Winona is to Winola. Although it's shaped more like a heart, New Angola Lake was originally called Triangular Lake and Three-Cornered Pond. Other lakes in the region named for shapes include Heart Lake in Montiel. Half Moon Lake near Mount Cobb, and Fiddle Lake in Susquehanna County. Old Forge The mediocre quality of ore in the Old Forge area, once known as Mud Town, led to at least one abandoned iron forge by the year 1800. A quarter century later, when settlers returned, the community referred to the abandoned works as the Old Forge. Not far from the Stagecoach Inn run by Charles Drake, who takes credit for current-day Drake's Lane. This abandoned forge was located near the convergence of the Lackawanna River and St. John's Creek, right near the border with Durier, and not far from the marvelously named corner of Dick and Wood Streets. Of course, Old Forge today claims the title of Pizza Capital of the World, 
an assertion that raises one or two unconvinced eyebrows back in Brooklyn. Oliphant. Originally named Queen City and Midway City, at least unofficially, the town was eventually named after George Talbot Oliphant, a president of the Delaware and Hudson Canal Company. One legend suggests there is a hidden, hidden treasure buried somewhere beneath Oliphant. Hints are said to be encoded in the placement of the town's churches and former synagogue, the positions of which form the same pattern as the stars in the constellation Orion. The volunteer firemen of Oliphant, by the way, still go by the name of Queen City Hose Company. Palmyra Township Located near Hawley, Palmyra basically means Palm City. It was once the name of an ancient caravan city, a Roman outpost now called Tudmor in central Syria. A desert oasis, Palmyra dated well into biblical times. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, Abraham gathers his family and possessions and begins the journey to the land of Canaan, a trip that took him through five regions whose names now or at one time appeared in Wayne County. Palmyra, Damascus, Galilee, Bethany, and finally Canaan itself, the original name for Waymart. Indeed, if he took a little detour, he might find himself in present-day Abrahamsville. Pennsylvania. Our state was almost called New Wales before the name Sylvania was bantered about. It was Charles II, the presumed inspiration for Kingston, who added the prefix Penn, much to William Penn's discomfort. Until around 1786, the colony state of Connecticut claimed as its own territory the entire northern third of Pennsylvania, which in pre-colonial times was known as the Quaker Province. To celebrate this former distinction, we can still go to Pep Boys and buy a quart of Quaker State Motor Oil, which is a fine substitute for wine if you're ever invited to a dinner party in Wilkesboro and need a quick gift. To this day, the town of Wilkesboro still thinks it extends a few hundred miles to the west, which partly explains its irrational fetish about naming the Avoca Airport backwards, even though it's only half the size of Scranton. Pike County, named for General Zebulon Montgomery Pike, killed in 1813 at the Battle of York, now Toronto, during the War of 1812. This is the same Pike who, seven years earlier when exploring the western United States, discovered Pike's Peak, reputedly from 80 miles away. As a youth, Pike is said to have made several trips through the Pike County region, which may help explain the name of Zebulon Place in Milford. On the whole, the War of 1812 played a palpable backdrop for the origin of town names in our region, towns that include Blakely, Cunningham, Covington, Dallas, Lake Ariel, and even Ghent. Pittston. Pittston was once known as Pittstown in honor of Sir William Pitt, the same Pitt as in Pittsburgh. Prior to the American Revolution, settlements along the Susquehanna were considered part of the western frontier and were the victims of scattered Indian attacks. Frequently, these attacks were encouraged by Spanish and French agents eager to intimidate the English-born settlers. Pitt was the first who convinced the British to commit enough resources to repel the Spanish and the French, and his efforts gained him considerable popularity in the colonies, though he was never invited to the annual Pittston Tomato Festival. An important river ferry point after the Revolution, Pittstown later became Pittston Ferry until eventually both the ferry and its name got torpedoed for good. Plains Township this spot on the map was originally occupied by the Wanami tribe of the Delaware Indians, whose chief's name at one time was Jacob. 
Jacob lived on the level portion of the township near the borough of Parsons, and the old Jacob's Plains eventually took hold until one day old Jake was given the heave-ho and nothing but plains remained. Right across the river in Kingston, we once saw Abram's Plain, named for a chief of the Mohicans. Abram hasn't departed us totally, for we still have his namesake, Abraham's Creek, flowing right through his old plain. Plymouth, named by settlers from Plymouth, Connecticut, which took its name from Plymouth, Massachusetts, which was named in honor of Plymouth, England, home port of the Mayflower, and located at the mouth of the River Plym. Another mouth town nearby is Exeter. Early residents here arrived from the area of Exeter, Rhode Island. Earlier residents there had arrived from Exeter, England, which sits on the mouth of the River X. The local Plymouth was first known as Shawnee Town since the village sat near the site of an old Shawnee community, perhaps not far from the current Shawnee Avenue or the old Shawnee Theater. In 1869, 110 men died in Plymouth's Avondale Colliery, one of the greatest mine disasters in American history. Pocono, from the Indian, probably Delaware word, Pocohana, meaning stream between two mountains, possibly referring to the Delaware Water Gap, and it's here where we find the fabled Indian head formation on Mount Tammany. With the word Pocohana, we once again see the suffix Hanna creeping into our local language with charming regularity. Pictured here is the Pocohana Lodge of Pocono Pines near Long Pond. The word Hannah is the source of several other place names in our region, including Tonkhannock, Lackawanna, Tobihanna, Shikshini, Tamaqua, Susquehanna, and Hana Gulch, the last of which is sister city to the town of Hana, Germany. Promised Land now a state park in Pike County, the name began as a term of derision for rocky land barely able to support any sustainable degree of agriculture, despite the promises of shysters who sold the tracks with or without snake oil on the side. For this reason, an old religious sect known as the Shakers came and went, as did lumbering companies that chopped down most every tree in sight and hauled them off to the shipbuilding yards of Philadelphia. The area has since been replanted with second-growth forests. Not far from promised land, we find Newfoundland, appropriately enough the new found land of Daniel Stroud, who along with his father Jacob helped establish Stroudsburg. Providence. The original township in the Scranton area, Providence remained an independent community until its merger with Scranton in 1866. The township was founded around 1770 by settlers from Providence, Rhode Island, and quickly became known as a place to fetch a good bottle of whiskey. In its early years, people referred to the area as Centerville, as well as the Corners, a name that remains today in the form of Providence Corners or Providence Square. By 1827, folks outside of Providence sometimes called the place Razorville, poking fun at the supposed shady horse trading practices of these ex-Yankees from Rhode Island, not to mention their deplorable habit of racing horses on Sundays. In naming the township, the founders, perhaps with Indians on their mind, no doubt sought to elicit all the divine providence they could get their hands on. Now let's step outside Northeast PA for the next two. First off, Punxsutawney. Apparently, the early settlers were overwhelmed at times by the huge numbers of nearly invisible gnats, or midges, that infested the region. The nickname for these gnats, or sand flies, as some called them, was punky, a name you'll still find in a good dictionary. So, Punxsutawney is merely the town of punkies, whose bite can be painful and itchy. Pussyville, a now defunct 
town in Lancaster County. Fortunately, a Pussyville Road still exists near Quarryville, where it is assumed one can quarry for better things than beaver with or without a posse to chase down the original Mr. Sam Pussy and his son Tom Pussy, who dignified the area with their illustrious names and abandoned mills. It's still advised that when driving from Pussyville to Beaver, be sure to call Wendy's ahead of time so they don't run out of Beaver butter, whether or not Wendy's is located in Beaver Springs, Beaver Town, Beaver Meadows, or even along the Little Beaver River. East of Pussyville, near Chester, we find the old home of Caleb Pussy, now on the National Register of Historic Places, as well it should be. Despite rumors to the contrary, the Pussy House is not located near Big Beaver, though William Penn was so impressed by its hospitality that he visited on more than one occasion. Rome, Bradford County. Located nine miles from Tawanda at 41.9 degrees north latitude, Rome, Italy, is located at 41.5. A coincidence? One thinks not, as one prefers not to think about Rome's elegantly named section of Bumpville, named for the illustrious soldier of revolutionary times, Reuben Bumpus. The nearby town of Athens, by the way, is hardly at the same latitude as the Greek capital. Just for the record, down the road from Athens we find Milan. Bradford County is also home to Troy, once a co-county seat with Tawanda. Ancient Troy left behind little but the legend of the Trojan horse, but at least modern Troy has a motel with all the amenities one could ever expect in this fast-paced world. Schuylkill. This is not an Indian name, but one that comes from the Dutch for hidden stream. When Dutch explorers first passed the mouth of the Schuylkill River, they missed it completely. So later, they gave it this lovely name with the kill ending that means creek. Dutch-inspired town names are far more common in the New York area, including the Catskills, Peekskill, and Fishkill, though the Poconos does feature a Bushkill, which, contrary to popular opinion, is not Dutch for Dead Beaver Creek. It's well known that the Dutch explorer Peter Minuit purchased Manhattan Island for $24, but what's often left out is that when Minuit first approached New York Harbor, he ran all excited up to the crow's nest and exclaimed, Staten Island? Scranton with the dashing George Scranton on the right and his suave brother Selden on the left. A string of names preceded Scranton. Kapaus, after Kapoos, father of Winola, chief of the Muncie tribe. Slocum Hollow, which the Slocum family didn't like one bit. Deep Hollow, Unionville, Harrison, Lackawanna Ironworks, heaven forbid, Scrantonia, and almost, but not quite, Armstrong. Named for the brothers George and Selden Scranton, who came from New Jersey in 1840, bought most of what is now downtown Scranton for the tidy sum of $8,000, and began to smelt iron. Scranton's greatest claim to fame might be just sitting right under its nose, unheralded the old Capitol Records plant in the Southside Flats. In its heyday, this factory produced over half of that label's Beatles vinyl sold in the USA, the greatest outpouring of artistic genius since the time of Shakespeare. About six other towns in America are also called Scranton, but none of those can brag about being home to the renowned Melba Bar, located on Kapaus Avenue, though not yet an historic landmark. Shemokin, Northumberland County. It's been suggested that the word means eel stream, or where the chief lived, but the most likely translation is where the horns are plentiful, suggesting that Shemokin would be a great name or a place for a pickup bar. 
It was named after a village of the Saponi tribe, Shahamokink, Shenandoah, Schuylkill County. The most common explanation is that Shenandoah is an Indian name meaning sprucy stream. Another says river flowing alongside high hills and mountains. Still another suggests the name comes from the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia, where the meaning would lean toward daughter of the skies. Yet another translation comes from the Iroquois for great plains. During its heyday, Shenandoah was known as the only Wild West town in the East, featuring more bars per capita than any other town in America, a distinction that Northeast PA as a whole still takes the silver medal for. Shenandoah was also a hotbed of labor unrest in the name of miners' rights, as illustrated here in Harper's Weekly from 1888. Shikshini, situated along a scenic strip of Route 11 midway between Natticoke and Berwick, Shikshini is named for nearby Shikshini Creek. The word means five mountains, as five mountains converge near here. Newport, Knob, Lees, River, and Rocky Mountains. However, some people suggest the correct origin is a corruption of the Muncie Indian word Shigihana, which means fine stream. Not only does this explanation seem plausible, it would add yet one more Hana to our local vocabulary. Still others suggest the word Shikshini stems from Algonquin term, meaning turkeys aplenty, which is also a nickname for the Pennsylvania State Legislature further down Route 11. Besides Shikshini, Pennsylvania is graced with an abundance of splendid knobs. Mount Pocono's Knob Road, which ends at the impressive Knob Overlook, lets one chance a glance down on the Little Knob. Elk Mountain has a pair of lovely high knobs called North and South, though knobs generally run east to west. Shavertown has a quaint Knob Hill, ditto for Hawley, while Tonkanic features a high knob. Intrepid explorers can check out Greentown's high knob fire tower, and further east on I-84 we hit the Milford Knob Trail. The Appalachian Trail can brag about a center point knob, though knobs tend to be a little off-center, or so say the true believers in Knobsville or on Jefferson Township's bald knob. South of Stroudsburg, we have a knob view farm, and a little further west, we find Big Boulder, a fine venue for the Big Knob Grange Fair, perhaps sponsored by Knobs and Knockers at Peddler's Village. Shohola, founded at Shohola Creek in 1772 in Pike County, Right along the border with New York State, the name means Place of Peace. To the southeast, along the Delaware, we also find Equinoc in Monroe County. That name supposedly means Place Where Clothing is Distributed, though an alternate translation is Trout Stream. The historic marker, pictured here, recalls how Shahola residents once provided assistance to Confederate prisoners whose train collided there in 1864. In one shot, residents of Shahola proved they could spread a little peace and distribute a little food, shelter, and clothing at the same time. The so-called Wilkesboro Scranton Airport. Speaking of train wrecks, most of the carnage here was inflicted by Wilkesboro Congressman Dan Flood, one of the biggest crooks in the history of American politics. Flood finally got bounced out of Washington by his own Democratic Party as a result of kickbacks and other forms of chicanery just days before he faced impeachment. Flood was also named to Time Magazine's infamous Rogues Gallery in February of 1980. The backwards name of the Avoca Airport is a product of Flood's shady habit of attaching stealth riders onto unrelated house bills, one practice for which he eventually got bounced. 
Given the tremendous heritage and population distribution of northeastern Pennsylvania, this backwards name is a deliberate misrepresentation of reality, like putting false credentials on a resume. The name does make sense only in the context of kickbacks, payoffs, and corruption, which Flood took to new levels. Let's fix this monstrosity, by the way. Uh, there we go. If you're going to name something backwards, why not go all the way? Strucka. Located near the northeast corner of Pennsylvania, along Strucka Creek, the name is said to mean junction of waters. The famed Strucka Viaduct, completed in 1878, helped the New York and Erie Railroad shave times off the tedious journey from Lake Erie into the New York City region. Strucka joins Equinock and Chugnut as three towns in our northern regions whose pronunciations bear little resemblance to their spelling. Since Strucka looks phonetically like Staruka, Equinock like Equinunk, and Chugnut looks like Choconut, where famed aviator Charles Lindbergh made an emergency landing in 1927. Stroudsburg. In the summer of 1778, Stroudsburg became a haven for survivors of the Wyoming Massacre along the Susquehanna. Two years earlier, Colonel Jacob Stroud had bought some land tracks and built a stockade near the Delaware River at Stroudsburg. The stockade, known as Fort Penn, provided protection for the former Wyoming Valley settlers, a gesture that helped cement the fatherly status of Colonel Stroud. The surrounding area was also once known as Fort Hamilton, built by Pennsylvania authorities for the same reason as Fort Penn. Stroud's son, Daniel, later became something of a real estate mogul, helping to develop the Newfoundland area. On properties he sold in Stroudsburg, he wisely insisted that houses be set back. Sunbury. Sunbury earned a line in the nation's history in 1883, when Thomas Edison began operating the world's first three-wire lighting station here. Edison was drawn to Sunbury because of its cheap and abundant energy resources, but some local residents weren't so drawn to Edison. Many townsfolk were simply afraid to walk near the electric wires, and it can be assumed a similar problem arose when Edison started pumping electricity into Mount Carmel some 23 miles away. Sitting at the point where the west and north branches of the Susquehanna converge, Sunbury dates back to 1772 and shares its name with the city on the Thames, southwest of London. The word literally means City of the Sun. Susquehanna. From Sisquehanna, Sisque means mud, and Hanna, of course, means river, thus muddy river, never to be confused with muddy waters. Settlers may have first heard the word used by natives during a heavy runoff, and on some early maps the spelling Sasquahanna can be seen. The Susquehanna River, pictured here at White Sox in Bradford County, has also been translated as Long Reach River, Crooked River, and Great Bay River. As the Susquehanna flows past Wilkesboro, however, it's known as the Susquehanna. It takes a Hana mentality to paint up one's car like this, and here's where you find this distorted nomenclature and redneck grandstanding in abundance, in this case with a minor league hockey team that Scranton gave to Wilkesboro in the first place. Swoyersville, named for John Henry Swoyer, who operated two coal breakers there behind Forty Fort. In the 1950s, voters in Swoyersville put the issue on the ballot to remove the S and return the name to its original form. As a result of the vote, one that went right down party lines, the S in the middle remained, though some residents still insist on calling the joint Swoyerville. In contrast with the reputations earned by other coal executives, John Henry Swoyer goes down in history as a gentleman who actually treated his workers well. 
Swoyersville boasts a marvelous old section known as Dickville, even though it's not the location of Johnson College. Dickville is a skip and a jump from West Wyoming's old section of Knob Hill, where you can perfect your skills tuning the dials on the radio as you drive along the back mountains Knob Hill Road. Tamaqua, Schuylkill County, south of Hazleton. Tamaqua is an Indian name for our good friend the beaver, though more precisely it's a corruption of the word Tanka Mochkhana, meaning little beaver stream, and adding yet one more Hana to our local heritage. Tamaqua Creek is sometimes called Beaver Creek, and it must never be confused with Beaver Lick, Kentucky. Our beloved Commonwealth is just chock full of beaver towns, including Beaver Meadows, Beaver Town, Big Beaver, New Beaver, North Beaver, Beaver Falls, which once had a Tamaqua Club, Beaver Springs, Beaver Dale, and simply Beaver. There is even a Facebook page called Things to Do in Beaver, apparently for people with little imagination. Beaver itself was once called the Beaver Reservation, but frankly we're not going there lest we restart the Beaver Wars of the 17th century. Taylor. Once known as Taylorville, it was named for Moses Taylor, the famous check writer from New York. Among his many endeavors, Taylor was a major Union financier during the Civil War. One of the richest Americans of his era, a billionaire by today's standards, Taylor endowed a quarter million dollars to open Moses Taylor Hospital and serve workers of his railroad, the DL and W, as well as his iron and coal workers. In this regard, Taylor joins Swoyer as two coal executives who were actually concerned about the fates of their workers. At one time, Taylor held controlling interests in corporations that have grown into today's Citibank and Con Edison Electric of New York. Texas Township found in Wayne County in a swampy region just south and west of Honesdale, also known as Honestale. The excitement began around the time of the Mexican-American War, and thus Texas Township joins Matamoros as towns whose origins trace back to this time and place in American history. In this regard, Texas also boasts a similar heritage as the Nebraska section of German and Oregon section of Pittston, all three names taken from former territories gaining statehood. Here in Texas Township, we find the old village of Indian Orchard. We can also drop in on the Dorflinger Glass Works and Estate that once supplied tableware for the White House and now on the National Register of Historic Places. Thornhurst Township, one of the most recent name changes to emerge in our area. After Lackawanna County broke away from Luzerne in 1878, its southernmost spot, Buck Township, was split in half. The Lackawanna portion of the township now became Lehigh, which drove the post office nuts because a Lehigh township already existed in Wayne County. But it took until 1996 before Lackawanna's southern township of Lehigh officially became known as Thornhurst. Early Buck Township was known for its swamps, taking on the nickname Shades of Death, prompted by the quagmire it created for escapees from the Wyoming Massacre of 1778. This swampland, now the home of the Pinchot Trail, was once the center of one of the great land swindles in American history. Known as the City of Rome Project, charlatans in 1810 finagled several wealthy Philadelphians to purchase land in the area. Even before construction of cabins or buildings, a president and 18 councilmen were elected to lead the great new city. Said one historian of times past, the so-called city of Rome was fit only for reptiles and beasts. Troop spun off from Dixon City and named around 1894 for Dr. Benjamin Troop, 
a real estate dabbler and the Lackawanna Valley's first physician. It's been said that Dr. Troop was drowning in red ink until he enlisted in the Army as a Civil War surgeon and his debts were temporarily put on hold. In 1911, some 72 miners were killed in a fire at Troop's Pancost Mine, one of the worst mining disasters in this part of the state. Streets named Pan Coast, Pan Cost, still exist today in Troop and Dixon City. Dr. Taroop eventually founded Lackawanna Hospital, later to become Scranton State General Hospital, now the site of a veteran's home. Note that Time magazine of February 20th, 1978, hints strongly, if you put the pieces together, that Congressman Dan Kickback Flood used his tainted influence to steer the Veterans Administration Hospital, earmarked for Scranton, to his home turf of Wilkesboro. Toby Hanna, named for its proximity to Toby Hanna Creek, whose banks are lined with alder trees. Toby is an Indian word for alder, and Hanna, as we've seen, means stream. A Toby Creek still runs along the west side of the Wyoming Valley with perhaps a similar name origin. Pictured here is an old map of Toby Hanna Township located to the southwest of the town of Toby Hanna. Tawanda, from a Nanticoke Indian name Tawandiunk, meaning where we bury the dead or here our great dead are resting. Tawanda at one time was a convergence point for various Indian trails in the region, some continuing toward upstate New York and Canada. Nanticoke rituals included burying the bones of the dead in sacred grounds, and the bones in question may have been transported all the way from Maryland. Once called Meansville, which explains Means Street, Tawanda takes its name from the nearby Tawanda Creek. About six miles southeast of Tawanda, we find the village of Standing Stone named for an ancient monolith in the Susquehanna that stands 44 feet high, 16 feet wide, and about 4 feet thick. It probably arrived by means of glacial activity thousands of years ago, and the same type of geological activity has led to the names of Brooklyn and Promised Land and has led to the downfall of Greeley. Trips Park, nowadays relegated to nickname status in West Scranton, just like adjacent Hyde Park, Tripp's Park is named to honor one of the region's first settlers, Isaac Tripp, who arrived around 1771 and represented our region in Connecticut's assembly. Because of his real estate dabbling, Tripp earned the tongue-in-cheek nickname Squire. His son, Isaac Jr., built a homestead that still exists today in the Trips Park section. Prior to the Wyoming Massacre, Indians had abducted Tripp's granddaughter, Frances Slocum. Tripp traveled through the 44th area to investigate, but unfortunately turned into one of the victims himself. Tripp Street is located just north of Tripp's Park, which never ran further south than Cemetery Street, which today is known as West Gibson Street, adjacent to the Boneyard, known as Cathedral Cemetery. Cemetery Street formed the western boundary of a self-named and annoyingly so neighborhood called Farr's Ideal Home Sites, and Farr Street still exists here. In 1899, John Farr became Speaker of the Pennsylvania House, and 12 years later he became a U.S. Congressman. Trucksville, named for early resident William Trux, possibly spelled T-R-U-X or even T-R-U-A-X, a veteran of the Revolutionary War. By 1813, Trux's son Bill Jr. sold nearby land to Philip Shaver, for whom Shavertown takes its name. It appears Shavertown was once known as Bloody Run, and supposedly the main drag featured a number of butchers. A better explanation says a nearby slaughterhouse drained its effluent into a creek named Bloody Run, here on the Wyoming Valley's Back Mountain, an Indian code word for West Gulch. 
Pictured here is a slaughterhouse typical of the latter 1800s. Tonkanic. Some tribes used a word to denote the smaller of two converging streams, and the word for this region was Tonkhana. The Tonkhana in question here is the adjacent Tonkanic Creek, which converges with the Susquehanna River 14 miles east of the Forks of Forkston. Another translation is bend in the river place, something the Susquehanna does majestically in the Tonkanic area. Shown here is Tonkanic's Metcalf Mansion, displaying the Queen Anne style of architecture. Varden. Yet another literary reference has emerged in our little survey of town name origins. This time we go to the story Barnaby Rudge, one of only two attempts by Charles Dickens at writing an historical novel. In this book, set during the No Popery Riots of 1780, Dolly Varden is an attractive teenager and a professional flirt who's faced with an age-old battle of having two different men court her favor. The name place of Varden is located north of Lake Ariel, featuring the Varden Conservation Area, where flirtation is off-limits except among finches and chipmunks. Note that the Trips Park section of Scranton has streets named after the great novelists Dickens, Hawthorne, and Thackeray. On a related note, it's said that the town of Wilkesboro has streets named after NASCAR drivers, brands of chewing tobacco, and types of motor oil. Wallen Pawpack means deep, stagnant water. The water referred to is not Lake Wallen Pawpack as such, created long after the native Indians left, but the nearby stream. Underneath the lake stands the now defunct village of Wilsonville, built upon land owned by James Wilson a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Wapwallopin, southern Luzerne County, east of Berwick. This means where the wild hemp grows, an argument that may not hold too much water with the judge. An alternate explanation gives us place where messengers were murdered. Who the messengers were and who murdered them is a matter for conspiracy theorists and potheads. Waverly. The novels of Sir Walter Scott achieved a high degree of success in America in the 1800s. One of Scott's first successes was Waverly, written in 1805 and part of the popularly popular Waverly novels series. Several American towns chose Waverly as their name in the years following its publication. Local credit for the choice goes to Louise Palmer Smith of nearby Glenburn, who nominated the name in 1853 and who probably had Scott's novel, A Legend of Montrose, on her bucket list of must-reads. Glenburn is itself a name inspired by the great novelist Scott. Waymart. From 1829 to about 1885, Millions of tons of coal moved up and through the engineering marvel known as the Gravity Railroad, connecting the Lackawanna Valley with Honesdale and eventually, by canal, to the markets of the East Coast. We still have gravity streets in Carbondale, Oliphant, Dunmore, and Pittston, as well as a Gravity Hill Road in adjacent South Canaan. In the winter, the canal was frozen, so during this time coal was weighed and unloaded at a way station that eventually became known as Way Mart, never to be confused with Walmart. Way Mart was once known by the biblical name of Canaan, which solves the mystery of why South Canaan is located right next door all by itself with no other Canaans nearby save the old hamlet of East Canaan. Canaan near the present-day St. Tihon's Monastery. Not to be outdone by South Canaan, Waymart features a gravity plains road. Not that far from Waymart we find Prompton, where its original settlers in the 1800s prompt in paying their debts and obligations. So says one story regarding the origin of this town near Prompton State Park. 
which brings us down the road to Sterling. This town in Wayne County was named around 1815 by one Richard Lancaster, a silversmith hoping to promote not only the quality of his wares, but the character of his neighbors. Wayne County, named for General Mad Anthony Wayne, who was ruthlessly efficient in putting down Indian skirmishes in Pennsylvania. Wayne picked up the nickname, it said, because he could lead an army on less than three hours sleep. Even more to the point, Wayne had a short fuse that didn't take much to set off. Until 1842, the county seat was located at Bethany, named by the locally famous Quaker, Henry Drinker. Other locations in Wayne County that feature the biblical touch include Galilee, Damascus, Canaan, Salem, and Lebanon. The highest point in Wayne County, by the way, is Mount Ararat, where Noah parked his ark after the Great Flood. Weatherly, Carbon County Named for David Weatherly, a clockmaker, and like Dunmore, this is a story of a promise unfulfilled. In exchange for this honor, Dave promised to provide the town with the grandest of clocks, but the townspeople are still waiting, so perhaps Weatherly should revert to its original name of Black Creek. In 1901, financier and industrialist Charles Schwab prevented, rather presented Weatherly with a new high school given in honor of his wife, Urana, who was born and raised there. Atop the school, we see a clock similar to the one David Weatherly promised, but never delivered. West Pittston. Until 1859, West Pittston was known as Jenkins Fort, a small stockade built by the British in 1778. Jenkins Fort isn't totally forgotten, since Jenkins Township still carries on the name, and West Pittston still boasts a Jenkins Street. Pictured here is the Fort Jenkins Bridge in the 1920s. Wilkesbury, named to honor John Hanna Wilkes to the left and Isaac Gulcho Barre, members of Parliament during the Revolutionary Period. Both men argued in the House of Commons, often under considerable opposition, for greater tolerance of the American cause. Wilkes was once imprisoned for publishing a risque poem entitled An Essay on Woman, though he later became Lord Mayor of London. Barre was famous for calling Americans Sons of Liberty. Wilkesboro was also known as Kickback Haven in honor of the Kids for Cash and Hotel Tax schemes that serve as surreptitious funding mechanisms for the premeditated transfer of media outlets from Scranton to the Gulch. Wilkesboro was once a settlement known as Fort Durkee, and Major John Durkee named his son Barre, whose nickname was Gulch Jr., though you won't find a Durkee Street unless you wade over the river into Forty Fort. Meanwhile, Durkee's cousin named his son Wilkes, poor sucker, whose nickname was Hena Jr., who never checked into the Fort Durkee Hotel, pictured here near present-day Wilkes University. However, Congressman Dan Kickback Flood did once check in, but you never knew who was pulling the hapless Danny Boy's puppet strings on any given day. Fort Durkee took on the name Dickinson in 1783. Fort Dickinson was destroyed a year later after Pennsylvania declared that Connecticut Yankees were not legal residents of the Commonwealth, thus they could not vote and their land titles were worthless. Despite compelling evidence to the contrary, Wilkesboro, an enclave of the service-to-self psycho-spiritual orientation inconsistent with world trendings, is not an Indian word meaning either Pennsylvania's premier trailer park or Newark minus the glitter. But its patron saint and ethical mentor was such a childish megalomaniac, he liked to strut around the halls of Washington wearing a cape while collecting his payoffs in order to purchase 
a backwards airport name on behalf of his handlers. Williamsport Founded in 1795 and originally known as Virginia, Williamsport began as a strategic landing point on the Susquehanna. An excellent river harbor, the city was known as Williamsport, two words, but whoever this actual William was may never be known for sure. But here's one possible explanation. In 1793, a Scotsman named Michael Ross purchased a large chunk of land located where downtown Williamsport sits today. After nearly two centuries of nail-biting mystery, one of Ross's descendants presented a diary to the Lycoming County Historical Society in 1976. The journal contains a page with Ross's entry. I name the borough of Williamsport for my son, William. In the 1860s, Williamsport was the center of the American lumber industry, located close to dense timberlands whose logs could be floated down the Susquehanna, eventually reaching the ports of Philadelphia and Baltimore. By the end of the century, however, this preeminence disappeared as the local industry faced strikes and deforestation. The millionaire's row of homes for lumber executives still exists today, as does the name of the high school sports teams, the millionaires, who can brag a heftier portfolio than the Dunmore Bucks. Wyalusing, Bradford County. Moravian missionaries shortened the difficult to pronounce Mekewilusing around 1792. The name meant home of the ancient warrior, referring to a legendary, perhaps mythical, Indian warrior who came to settle here on the road to Tawanda, though he never had the privilege of checking into the Wyalusing Hotel. Missionaries sometimes referred to the town as Fritenjuten, meaning tents of peace, perhaps because Indians were often too intense for their own good. Much further to the east, the name Shohola means place of peace. Within Wyalusing Township, we find a spot called Marial, a name dragged here from Connecticut as early as 1788, apparently to celebrate the cheery influence of rum. Wyoming Valley The Delaware Indians call the valley Mikwerwomink, meaning extensive meadows. New Englanders had trouble pronouncing the difficult first syllable, so they shortened the word, and for a time the valley was called Wyoming and Wyoming. The town of Wyoming was once known as New Troy, and the county of Wyoming was originally known as Putnam, reflecting a strong New England influence. Putnam was a Connecticut hero of the Revolution, and Tonkanic Township was originally known as Putnam Township. In one of the quirkier episodes in local geographic history, the Greater Wyoming Valley in 1774 was claimed by Connecticut and briefly named Litchfield County, taken from Litchfield, Connecticut, though it was located 200 miles away. After a couple of years, however, the name changed to Westmoreland County. By 1786, Luzerne County was formed to counteract the movement by the Connecticut settlers to form the state of Westmoreland, a short-lived attempt at secession from the rest of Pennsylvania. On maps today, we still see Center Moreland and North Moreland in Wyoming County, not to mention Putnam Street in Scranton and Tonkanic, and let's not forget the Westmoreland Club back in the Wyoming Valley. Bradford County, by the way, still has a Litchfield Township and a borough of Troy. Wysox comes from the word Wysach Giming, meaning place of grapes, though others say it means canoe harbor. It's located near the spot where French exiles lo loyal to Louis XVI built a safe haven for themselves and Marie Antoinette. Antoinette never made it across the pond as she was captured and executed before ever escaping to Pennsylvania. However, Marie, who never said, let them eat grapes, 
does enjoy the honor of helping us wrap up this video in splendid fashion, and even she might stay tuned in for future updates.